welcome to V2 SSI program, e-learning program. I am Dr. Shantra Jappa, Professor of Mathematics, at presently working as Control of Examination, NMIT Bangalore. Uh, today's topic is uh, analytical uh, solid geometry, one of the chapter for uh, advanced mathematics 2, that is for uh, lateral entry students from uh, diploma scheme. First, I would like to introduce solid geometry. The name itself uh, indicates solid geometry, that is uh, geometry dealing with uh, solids. A definition of solid, you just see, a solid is one having all the three dimensions, length, breadth and thickness. You just look around yourself, you can find everything in three dimension. There are just a uh, few figures I can quote, sphere, cone, cylinder, cube, etcetera. There are uh, geometrical figures in uh, three dimension. Solid geometry is an extension of uh, plane geometry. In plane geometry, we deal with uh, two dimensional uh, figures. In solid geometry, we deal with three dimensional figures. So, one dimension is extra. There are two approaches to study solid geometry. One is analytical method, the other one is vector method. To, I will consider analytical method that is as per the syllabus. So, here I would like to introduce a three dimension concept uh, like this. In two dimension, see we have studied already, we consider, consider two mutually perpendicular straight lines, say x o x dash and um, other line y o y dash like this. They are perpendicular to each other at o. So, in plane geometry, see this, this board itself a plane. So, to identify a point on this board say somewhere here, the point p is there. With reference to this system, this is called a rectangular coordinate system. So, we draw perpendiculars to coordinate axis like this. Say it is P L and this is P M, here 90 degree, here 90 degree. See here this P L is nothing but this O M, that is a distance along x axis, I will denote it by x. And this P M is nothing but this O L that distance I can denote it by y. See here, the position of this point is indicated by these two distances, these two perpendicular distances. I mean how far it is from uh, y axis and how far it is from x axis. Otherwise, this point is called the origin. So, you are at, in the initially you are here, then you move a distance along x axis to m, that is the distance x then move perpendicularly to reach the point P here, that is why. So, these two distances P L and P M will definitely represent the position of this point x y. The other conventions, suppose this point P is in the left side here, then we will consider x to be negative. That means, I have to write minus x and y remains same. And similarly, suppose the point is here, then I have to consider this y as negative. That means, all points here will have both x and y positive and here x negative y positive, we can write like this x negative y positive and indicate the point is in the second quadrant. This is, I mean this coordinate axis uh, divide the entire plane into four equal parts, they are called quadrants and here x is greater than 0, y is greater than 0, I mean both are positive. So, here both x and y negative, x also negative, y also negative, that means the point is in the third quadrant and here y negative, x is positive, so x is greater than 0, y is less than 0. Suppose a point lies on x axis only here, that means only x will be there, y will be 0, y coordinate will be 0. Similarly, this point 
only y coordinate will be there, x coordinate will be there. That means, you are moving only along x axis, no y and when you are moving along y direction, no x like that. So, the equation of this x axis, uh, you can take it as y equal to 0, that is a geometrical uh, constraint satisfied by all the points on this. Similarly, if I take x equal to 0 here, it is a geometrical constraint satisfied by all the points on y axis, therefore, x equal to 0 represents y axis and it is very clear the coordinates of this origin 0, 0. That means, you are not uh, moved in x direction or in y direction. So, with refers to this, uh, you have studied already in the previous classes, many figures in two dimension and all. Now, my problem is, suppose this point is not on the board, suppose this point is somewhere here, this is space. Then, you see this, you have moved a distance x along x axis and then a distance y along this direction and now we have to move like this. Then you see this to measure this distance, I want one more uh, axis that I will take it as z axis. So, that means I will introduce one more axis like this, you, you should uh, is the positive direction you think like this, you, have to, you, sh you should think the other direction also in space. Then this is positive direction point will be coming towards you. So, then see I will show you here. that is like this I will show you, because not possible to show this, it is z o z dash, this axis is like this. Then suppose the point is here, then what is the distance I will take it as z. So, there I will denote like this, so the point is here, now say this x, y and this I will call it as a n, then this I will denote by z. So, then the coordinates of uh, the point P are going to be x, y, z. And now, see that the other way, here x is in this direction positive, this direction negative. Similarly, y positive, y negative and z positive, z negative. See here, uh, you can see one plane here, these two axes to taken together represent x by plane and see this uh, y and z, they determine one more plane like this and uh, x and z represent another plane like this. So, you have three planes here, one plane like this, this is x z plane and this is y z plane and this board is a uh, x y plane. So, these uh, three planes and you see this uh, x y x dash, y o y dash, they are three mutually perpendicular straight lines and this x y plane, y z plane, z x plane, they are three planes, they are also perpendicular to each other. So, this these three system, I mean uh, this uh, three planes and uh, this system what I can call it as rectangular coordinate system divide the entire uh, space into uh, eight equal parts, they are called actins, actins. So, just like positive quadrant, so there is a positive actant, there x y z will be positive. Suppose the point P is here z positive, I mean that uh, z will be x, y, z all the three will be positive because you are moving like this, then like this, then like this, all the three distances are uh, positive. Suppose instead of coming like this, suppose if you go in the other direction, then z will become negative and similarly, this is x, z plane. So, the point is here, suppose instead of going upwards, suppose if you come downwards, then y will be negative. And similarly here, this is y z plane, point is here, you have moved like this, x is positive. If you move in this direction, x will be negative. Like that based on the values of x y z, I mean the sign of x y z, you can see where exactly the point, whether it is in the first actant or second actant, etcetera, you can uh, see that. So, like this, first you have to get this concept. For this, uh, you can see any of your uh, uh, rectangular uh, rooms, there you can see any corners, you can observe any corners, there you can see the, the intersection of two planes is going to be one uh, axis or one line, like that the floor and the two walls you can just observe, they are the best examples for uh, this system and the intersection of two walls is going to be one axis like that. So, for that you can I can uh, explain in another way like this. See. 
x axis like this, y axis like this and then z axis like this you can think like this in space like this, you can think like this. So, if x is positive, x is negative, okay, similarly y positive, y negative, z positive, z negative and see here one actant here and below that one more and this side one more below that like that this side, this side you see above this plane 4 and below that plane 4 and this point of intersection is once again called the origin. So, I have explained about the coordinate the other way, how to get the idea of this uh, coordinate the other way. So, here this room say this uh, floor that is say x y plane and that wall that is another plane y z plane and this is x z plane. Say the point is here, now how what, what I have written on the board you just see that point is here, suppose this uh, floor is x y plane, okay. you draw a perpendicular to this then this distance will become z uh, because uh, you are coming upwards. So, you think below this floor one more uh, actant is there if you if this point is below this floor then the that uh, z will be negative, this is z and then suppose this uh, intersection of this floor and this wall is uh, x axis I mean uh, x axis then you drop a perpendicular like this to that wall then this distance will become x and uh, similarly. So, you have one more you can draw like this. So, that is y axis intersection of uh, that uh, plane and this floor y then you drop a perpendicular to this plane like this then this distance will become y. So, depending on the position of this point whether it is the in which actant it exists. So, it depending on uh, the sign of uh, this x y z uh, that is about the introduction how we are going to indicate the position of the point p in space. Then see I can give you the equations of the lines and the planes now itself. See here it is a x axis and this is origin and this is y axis. So, here x axis is formed by the intersection of this plane and this plane I mean this x z plane x z plane means y equal to 0 you have to think like this this is z axis z axis and x x z plane is like this in that y is 0 similarly x y plane z equal to 0 that is equation of x y plane y z plane means uh, x equal to 0. See the equations of these three coordinate planes are here y equal to 0 means x z plane z equal to 0 x y plane x equal to 0 y z plane that means in y z plane uh, definitely x equal to 0. Then you see the equation of x axis that is the intersection of these two planes. So, these two equation taken together represent equation of x axis on x axis y 0 z 0 very clear. So, it represent x I mean all points on x axis will have only x values and the y and z value 0 and similarly y axis x 0 z 0. So, automatically all points on y axis will have only y values other to 0. Similarly, z axis see x 0 y 0 understood z axis we are moving in z axis. So, all points will have uh, z values like this you can think of this uh, basics. Then I will take up how to find the distance between the two points. Suppose uh, one point is here say x 1 y 1 z 1 and another point is here say q x 2 y 2 z 2 like this. How to find the distance between these two points they are in space. For this see I will write here see the point p x 1 y 1 z 1 and another point say here q x 2 y 2 z 2 they are actually the points are not on the board they are in space because when I have written the three coordinate axis means it is understood see this distance p q I want this distance to be calculated for this see the uh, this is about that what I have explained coordinates and coordinate planes everything explained and uh, this is also over and see this distance formula. So, here you see that figure we will just drop 
to coordinate, I mean uh, this exit plane. Say the points are L and M here, then drop one more perpendicular like this say P n, 90 degree here. So, you have to think like this, point P is here, you have drawn a perpendicular, point Q is there, you have drawn a perpendicular, these two points are in exit plane. Exit plane means they will have only x and z coordinates, y coordinate is 0. So, this point is going to be y coordinate is 0, therefore, you will have only x 1 z 1 x z plane and this will have x 2 z 2 because x z plane. So, using your usual distance formula of 2 dimension, you can get this distance L m using distance formula that is square root of x 2 minus x 1 whole square plus y 2 minus I mean z 2 minus z 1 whole square like that. If you square it, you will be get that root will go and that is nothing but this p n. See that once p n is known, see this q n this height is nothing but you see y coordinate it is y 2 and see this height m n, m n is nothing but p l and see that is y 1. So, this full height is y 2 and this height is y 1 therefore, this is going to be y 2 minus y 1. See l m is known here and this q n is known here, I am interested with this p q it is a right angle triangle, all of you know Pythagoras theorem, see this p q square equal to this p n square plus q n square, see that. p n square means it is here, you can get this that is nothing but L m, using distance formula you can get it, this L m is going to be square root of, I explained already x 2 minus x 1 whole square plus z 2 minus z 1 whole square like this see that L m is nothing but P n, it is nothing but P n. Then see P n is known, Q n is known, you can substitute here P n square, you see that y 2 minus y 1 no square, plus Q n square, Q n sorry, this Q n square is here, P n square is this one that is uh, x 2 minus x 1 whole square plus z 2 minus z 1 whole square that is p n square and q n square is this y 2 minus y 1 whole square. It is so simple you just see this, this is p q square. So, p q equal to square root of this that is all. The derivation is so simple, but for you the derivation is not there, but you should know how you get it. x 2 minus x 1 whole square plus y 2 minus y 1 whole square plus z 2 minus z 1 whole square, we just say this. That is the distance formula. Once you know p x 1 y 1 z 1, one point, another point q x 2 y 2 z 2, how to find the distance between these two? Use this formula. Root of x 2 minus x 1 whole square plus y 2 minus y 1 whole square plus z 2 minus z 1 whole square, that is the distance formula. So, to find the uh, distance, say you want the distance uh, of this point P from the origin, see this. Here as in the case of uh, two dimension, I told you origin is having uh, x 0, y 0, now here origin is having all the three 0, all the three coordinate 0, x coordinate 0, y coordinate 0, z, that is your neither moved in x direction or in y direction or in z direction, this is the starting point. So, now if you want the distance from O to P this distance if you want. So, uh, this uh, this is origin and see this, this point is known, this point is known. So, you can go for the distance formula O p equal to see that root of x 1 minus 0 square, x 1 square, y 1 minus 0 square, y 1 square plus z 1 minus 0 whole square z 1 square, just see that. Or if you want the distance O, I mean q from O, same way I will be getting instead of uh, see it is O q, I will be getting x 2 square y 2 square, z 2 square. Like this, you can find uh, the distance between any two points in space or the distance of a point uh, from the origin. The next one is section formula. See here, you just observe that figure. See the point P is uh, here and the point Q is here 
and there exists another point r which divides say this uh, peak in the ratio m is to n then you can find the coordinates of the point r okay in two dimension you have already studied this uh, the extension of two dimension is nothing but uh, uh, three dimension so here uh, these two triangles this uh, p r s p r s and uh, this uh, q r t they are similar triangles see so, this angle this angle and uh, this angle s yes, and angle t they are same so this angle q what you say they are same so all the three angles are uh, same so they are similar triangles so based on the property of similar triangles you can uh, uh, compare these sides see that uh, m is to n becomes m by n that the other two sides they are e the equal to you will be getting this uh, p s uh, divided by q t like that like this based on this condition you are going to get the value of x here the derivation i do not want to give because that is not in your syllabus it is going to be m x 2 plus n x 1 by m plus n and you are going to similarly you are going to get y m y 2 plus n y 1 divided by m plus n and z is equal to m z 2 plus n z 1 divided by m plus n. See in two dimension you have studied like this that is all p x 1 y 1 is one point q x 2 y 2 z 2 is y 2 x 2 y 2 is another point say the point r is somewhere here that is internal base uh, internal uh, uh, section I can say by cuts internally or divides internally. So say m is to n what this point r say the coordinates are x and y. So x equal to once again you just see m x 2 plus n x 1 by m plus n you just see there is no difference same thing is here and here y coordinate is m y 2 plus n y 1 divided by m plus n see same thing is here only the z coordinate is extra that is all. So the point r I can say in three dimension is going to be m x 2 plus n x 1 by m plus n m y 2 plus n y 1 divided by m plus n n z 2 plus m z 2 plus n z 1 divided by m plus n. If r divides internally, if r divides externally then in the middle you will get negative sign here also you studied in PUC classes it is the external intersection. So here that m should not be minus n because m equal to minus n means see the denominator becomes 0 so that uh, uh, quantity becomes infinite infinite means uh, where exactly that point I cannot say infinitely means that point is not exactly defined where exactly it is like this this is called section formula I mean knowing the point p and q and the ratio of division you are able to get that point a particular case suppose uh, that r divides p and q in the ratio k is to 1 say then it is change is only here k x 2 plus x 1 by k plus 1 like this and here k y 2 plus y 1 by k plus 1 and here k z 2 plus z 1 uh, divided by k plus 1 this is the formula. So here once again k should not be minus 1 for all values of k not equal to minus 1 we get all the points on this line that is the theory. The one more midpoint suppose this uh, r is the midpoint of p q you all familiar with this in two dimension. So the extension of that you see this m is to n becomes 1 is to 1 suppose m equal to n that is what m is to n is going to be 1 is to 1. So that means you can put uh, m and n equal to 1 in the previous formula then you will be getting just x2 plus x1 by x2 1 plus 1 and here y2 plus y1 by 2 because 1 plus 1 because m and n are same so 2 
uh, this is the midpoint formula you can take. How to find the midpoint of the line P Q if I ask. So, you are able to write the midpoint directly x 1 y 1 z 1 x 2 y 2 z 2. How to get this midpoint may I see x 2 plus x 1 by 2 y 2 plus y 1 by 2 and z 2 plus z 1 by 2 that is the midpoint formula. So, here uh, based on this uh, distance formula and the uh, section formula we shall uh, take up some uh, simple problems. So, here see p is 1 point p is 1.234 q is 1.456 not necessarily uh, these coordinates uh, are positive you can take uh, negative also sometimes some value is positive some value is negative like that. Then you say I will take some point say a point is uh, uh, some point uh, uh, 1 4 5 like this and another point is uh, uh, 2 5 6 something just like this. Then uh, how to find the distance P Q? Use the distance formula it is very clear you, it is x 1 y 1 z 1 just say this or uh, this is x 2 y 2 z 2 or even if you interchange no harm writing this one as x 2 y 2 z 2 that one as x 1 y 1 no harm because x 1 minus x 2 whole square is nothing but x 2 minus x 1 whole square x 1 minus x 2 whole square both are same. So, what is the distance p q? See root of x 2 minus x 1 whole square 2 minus 1 whole square plus 5 minus 4 whole square plus 6 minus 5 whole square like this. So, you see the 2 minus 1 whole square 1 square 1 only 5 minus 4 whole square that is also 1 and this is also 1. So, totally will be getting root of 3 and uh, that is the distance between the points uh, P and Q. Suppose you have taken uh, uh, this value negative sign. Then you see when you are subtracting this minus of this it will become plus 5. Then it will become here not 1 na, it will 11 square that is 121. 121 plus 2 it will become 1 2 3 root of 1 2 3 will get like this. You must be very careful when you are subtracting uh, like this 1 is negative it is this minus or minus you must be very careful or suppose uh, uh, this is minus this is also minus then it is going to be minus 2 plus 1 you just see here minus 2 plus 1 square then it is minus 1 square but still it is going to be 1 only like this that is what about a uh, distance formula and the uh, midpoint if you want uh, 2 3 4 see 4 5 6 what is the midpoint you can easily get it x 1 y 1 z 1 x 2 y 2 z 2 see the midpoint somewhere m say this is p this is q and see m see 4 plus 2 divided by 2 x 2 plus x 1 by 2 next y 2 plus y 1 by 2 5 plus 3 by 2. So, this is x 1 y 1 z 1 and this is x 2 y 2 z 2 and the last one z 2 plus z 1 by 2 it is 6 plus 4 by 2 and see this uh, this midpoint is going to be 6 by 2 3 8 by 2 4 and 10 by 2 5 see this is going to the midpoint. So, you, you can see this I have given some examples here to find the distance between those two points and distance of the point from the origin. See if you want the distance of this point from the origin, origin is somewhere here how to get it. So, origin coordinates are 0 0 0 and this point is p see that o p is going to be root of it is just like 2 minus 0 whole square 2 square 3 minus 0 whole square 3 square 4 minus 0 whole square 4 square and see it is going to be totally 16 plus 4 20 plus 9 29 square root of 29 like this. Next uh, suppose you want the point R which divides this P Q which divides this P Q in the ratio say 2 is to 1 or whatever the uh, as you like see uh, 3 is to 2 
or 4 is to 5, whatever it may be, take. See here P is known, Q is known and this ratio is also known, it is a section. So, this R is given by that section formula. The coordinates of R are given by, you just see, I have taken some other example similar to this, there also I have taken 3 is to 2, but not necessarily 3 is to 2, you can take any other ratio also. So, here this is a m is to n, see like this and this is a x1, y1, z1 like this you can mark it, so no confusion x2, y2, z2. Then the section formula you see it says, see this first one, this formula, see m, m x2, m is 3, 3 into 4, 12, okay, plus n into x1 n into x1 that is 2 into 2, 4 divided by m plus n, 3 plus 2, that is x coordinate. Similarly, m into y2 that is 3 into 5, 15 plus n into y1 that is 2 into 3, 6 divided by denominator remains same uh, 3 plus 2 and mz2 that is 3 into 6, it is 18 plus n into z1 n into z1 that is 2 into 4 it is 8 uh, divided by 3 plus 2 like this. So, you can simplify it, if this r is going to be check once again if you want m x 2, m x 2 3 into 4 12 plus n x 1 2 into 2 4 divided by n plus n, m y 2, m y 2 3 into 5 15 plus n y 1 see 2 into 3 6 denominator n plus n the last one mz2 that is 3 into 6 18 plus n into z1 4 into 2 8 okay. So, it is 16 by 5 and this is 21 by 5 and that one 26 by 5 like this you are able to get that point r which divides peak in the ratio 3 is to 2 internally. So, this midpoint I told you and see the next problem this one fifth one fifth one find the ratio in which find the ratio in which the line joining the points p say I have taken one of the coordinate is negative minus 8 5 9 uh, 4 5 3 is divided by y z plane also find the point of division this type of problem is important for the exam the previous things are very simple uh, to know the basics you should learn but this type of problem is important for the examination can refer back the old question papers. Here the concept is this, uh, I can uh, tell you that uh, same problem or any other problem also I, I can take here say the point uh, I will I can take any point no problem in it say 1, uh, 1, 2 and uh, 3 minus 1, uh, uh, 4 some problem. So, here the two points are here and uh, this is P, this is Q say there is a plane, say this plane is uh, I have given there yz plane, okay. So, yz plane say you can take or I will take any other plane, do not worry about that. So, suppose this plane divides this, this line at the point r, the problem is to find what ratio this r divides this line p q and then I have to find the coordinates of this point not known. So, here in this type of problem do not go for m is to n ratio, you take it as k is to 1, this is better always. That means, taking m by n as k that is all, that m by n equal to k. So, m is to n is k is to 1 like that. So, once you assume this ratio as k is to 1, I am able to write the point r, see the coordinates of the point r I can immediately write using that uh, formula only, this is x 1 y 1 z 1, this is x 2 y 2 z 2 and see that section formula, see this uh, section formula is this one uh, that is uh, this r, you see k x 2 plus x 1 by k plus 1, k y 2 plus y 1 by k plus 1, k z 2 plus z 1 by k plus 1 and see that. So, here k into 3, k x 2 means you see 3 k plus uh, see that uh, it is just like uh, x 1, it is uh, plus x 1. I mean uh, x1 that is 1, 
okay k x 2 plus x 1 k x 2 that is 3 k plus x 1 divided by k plus 1 and similarly k y 2 observe k y 2 means it is minus k because this coordinate is minus and plus y 1 means 1 divided by k plus 1 that remains same and the last one k z 2 that is 4 k plus z 1 means 2 uh, divided by k plus 1 like this. See this is the way of writing the point r by assuming this ratio is k is to 1. The major problem is to find k here. To find k I have given a condition the point r is on y z plane. I told you already in y z plane x equal to 0 x equal to 0 means y z plane I have explained the beginning itself in the introduction. So, the point r is in y z plane means it x coordinate is 0 that is all. So, this is x coordinate, this is y coordinate, this is z coordinate. See in y z plane all points will have its x coordinate 0. So, this 3 k plus 1 by k plus 1 must be 0. Then from this I can get the value of k you see this uh, 3 k plus 1 is going to be 0 here and see you will be getting uh, 3 k equal to minus 1 and k equal to minus 1 by 3 like this you will be getting that is the ratio. So, k is going to be negative means it indicates the external intersection the point is not here it is outside this uh, line peak somewhere here or that side. So, k is to 1 see the ratio is k is to 1 that is going to be minus 1 by 3 is to 1 or uh, minus 1 is to 3 like this that is the ratio if it is internal you will be getting a positive. Uh, then once you know the value of k you substitute here k equal to minus 1 by 3 here and here, here, here you will get the point r that is what I have given one problem here see that yes in this problem see I have calculated the value of uh, r like this then here, here also I have taken y z plane 0. So, I have equated its x coordinate to 0 you see that I got the ratio as uh, 2 is to 1 and once the ra point ratio is known I mean k is known substitute back in r I will get the point r you see it is going to be 0 5 5 y 0 means it is a point in uh, y z plane. Similarly, suppose this uh, instead of x z plane uh, suppose it is a uh, y z plane suppose it is x z plane x z plane means y coordinate 0 x z plane indicates y coordinate 0 that is y equal to 0 then you see here this y coordinate 0 that is minus k plus 1 divided by k plus 1 equal to 0 indicates see minus k plus 1 equal to 0 therefore k equal to 1 see this k is 1 means I will get the midpoint see that 1 is to 1 then uh, I am going to get the midpoint you just see that whether you are getting a not you just apply 3 plus 1 by 2 minus 1 plus 1 that is going to be 0 and 4 plus 2 by 2 and see that that is going to be the midpoint. Like this you can use that section formula to find the point which divides that line internally or externally and even the midpoint. And here one important problem is there to find the centroid of the triangle uh, familiar in the examination you just see this in this problem. Uh, a triangle is given with three vertices A is x1, y1, z1, say B is x2, y2, z2 and C is x3, y3, z3. Then how to find the centroid okay, using this section formula uh, that is given by answer is given uh, x1 plus x2 plus x3 by 3, y1 plus y2 plus y3 by 3, z1 plus z2 plus z3 by 3. In two dimension you know already the formula like this it is say A is x1, y1 and B is x1 x2 y2 and C is x3 y3. Then the centroid G you already know this it is given by x2 plus x1 by 2 in two dimension I am just writing y2 plus y1 by 2 and C is z2 plus z1 by 2 oh, sorry uh, that is all oh sorry x, x, x1 plus x2 plus x3 by 3 the other one midpoint. So, y 1 plus y 2 
plus y3 by 3 that is all. This is the formula I have in 2 dimension, but in 3 dimension I am getting one extra coordinate that is the z coordinate. You just see this. For this, see the process. So, this point is x1, y1, z1, and this point is x2, y2, z2. See the figure, and this point is x3, y3, z3. See the definition of G. You have to take the midpoints of the sides, take the midpoints of these three sides and join to the opposite angles, and these lines are called medians like this. Then these medians intersect at a point that is the centre G. That means the CL if you take that is the median and this uh, AM that is another median and BN. These medians meet at the point G. Here very important uh, property of this G is this G divides the CL in the ratio 2 is to 1 that is the advantage and here also 2 is to 1 and here also 2 is to 1 like this that is what I have shown in the figure. So, here L is the midpoint of AB. I can get the coordinates of L using midpoint formula. See that x2 plus x1 by 2, y2 plus y1 by 2, z2 plus z1 by 2. See this. That is the midpoint formula I told you. Here this point is known, L is known and the ratio is known means it is just like k is to 1 k is 2 you just see this 2 is to 1 formula I can write the coordinates of g using that formula see how you will get g see k this is just like x2 say capital x2 and say this is capital y2 and say this is capital z2 then see the formula k x2 plus x1 by k plus 1 k means 2 into this see 2 times x2 plus x1 by 2 plus x3 you just see this divided by 2 plus 1 like this the calculation will take place. So, here 2 2 cancels and see the formula here x1 plus x2 plus x3 by 3 exactly similar to this you can get y coordinate 2 times y2 plus y1 by 2 plus y3 and see the divided by 2 plus 1 it is just like k plus 1 here 2 2 cancels and the last one 2 times this one that is 2 times z2 plus z1 by 2 plus z3 divided by 2 plus 1 see that 2 2 cancels and see that z1 plus z2 plus z3 by 3. So, the coordinates of g are given by x1 plus x2 plus x3 by 3, y1 plus y2 plus y3 by 3 and z1 plus z2 plus z3 by 3. Similarly, you can get the center of the tetrahedron there four points will be there x1 x2 x3 x1 uh, x1 y1 z1 x2 y2 z2 x3 y3 z3 and x4 y4 z4 in that case it is going to be similarly x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 divided by 4 and all ok that is about uh, the basics I have introduced uh, what do you mean by solid geometry it is dealing with solids a solid is one having all the three dimensions, it is an extension of uh, plane geometry where we have studied uh, two dimensional figures. In the three dimensional figures we will deal with three dimension that is length, breadth and thickness. There I have introduced coordinate axis, coordinate planes um, and coordinates of a point and actants. There are eight actants in three dimension whereas in two dimension we will have only four quadrants and then distance formula, section formula and how to find the midpoint and all. So, now I will introduce direction cosines, direction cosines, direction cosines. You see this it is direction cosines. The definition you can see I will explain in this uh, here only. So, this uh, say x axis y z axis are there, there is a line so, I will show it on the board x axis, y axis, z axis like this and this is the origin. Uh, there is some line in space you think like this. This is some line a b in space. So, some line a b in space you draw a line parallel to this uh, through the origin like this. This is a b somewhere here 
you draw a line parallel to this through the origin, I will call it as OP like this. So, then you see this OP makes an angle alpha with x axis, I will write here beta with y axis like this and gamma with z axis, see like this alpha, beta, gamma like this, then uh, the, this angle is going to be gamma. I have shown in the figure, see that with x axis the angle uh, alpha is here, y axis beta is here, z axis gamma is here. So, of course, uh, I have taken the positive directions of uh, uh, this x axis, the angles made in uh, positive direction. If you uh, take the negative direction for x axis, definitely the angle is going to be 180 minus alpha. So, that is different and similarly here 180 minus beta and all, they are, the, they are called negative direction cosines. So, here uh, if I take uh, that angles and uh, negative direction cosine, now positive I will define, see if this is the case then cos alpha, cosine of alpha, cosine of beta and cosine of gamma, they are called the direction cosines of this line, uh, you can say A, B or O, P, usually denoted by small L, M, N. That is the definition of uh, direction cosines of a line in space. Why that name direction cosines? Because direction cosines indicate the direction of a line in space. If it is in two dimension only with refers to x axis, y axis you can get it. In three dimension all the three angles are required. What angle it makes with x axis? What angle it makes with y axis? And what angle it makes with z axis? So, they, they, they determine the direction of a line in space. So, they are called the direction cosines. So, here uh, what are the direction cosines of x axis, y axis, z axis for example. So, here x axis itself a line, y axis itself a line and z axis itself a line. See this O p suppose it is x axis. So, that means O p coincides with x axis then very clear the angle alpha becomes 0 and then immediately this angle beta becomes 90 degree and immediately this will become 90. So, for x axis alpha 0 and beta becomes 90 because x axis y axis is perpendicular, x axis z axis is perpendicular. That means, for x axis alpha is going to be 0, beta is going to be pi, pi by 2 90 degree and gamma is also going to be 90 degree. Then what are the direction cosines of x axis? See here cos 0 cos of 90 and here cos of 90. So, all of you know cos 0 is 1, cos 90 is 0, cos 90 is 0. So, 1 0 0 are the direction cosines of x axis. Similarly, for y axis suppose this O p coincides with y axis, then beta becomes 0 and alpha and gamma becomes 90. So, for y axis for y axis the DCs are going to be cos 90 Okay, beta is 0, so cos 0, cos 90 like this. Then 0, 1, 0, they are the DCs of y axis. Similarly, for z axis, the DCs are going to be 0, 0, 1, because the first two angles alpha and beta are going to be 90 and gamma is going to be 0, therefore, you will be getting cos 90, cos 90, cos 0 like this. So, DCs of z axis means 0, 0, 1. DC is of x axis 1 0 0 y axis you have to remember this what are the called DC is of the coordinate axis means you must remember while doing the uh, problems. Oh, I think uh, uh, it is time up uh, in the next class. So, I will be dealing with the properties of direction cosines and uh, I will define direction ratios what is the relationship between direction cosines, direction ratios and uh, how to find the angle between the two lines in space okay, using L m n and uh, direction ratios uh, that I will take up in the next class. Thank you. This alpha, beta, gamma like this then uh, the, this angle is going to be gamma. I have shown in the figure, see that with x axis the angle uh, alpha is here, y axis beta is here, z axis gamma is here. So, of course, uh, I have taken the positive directions of uh, uh, this x axis, the angles made in uh, positive direction. If you uh, take the negative direction for x axis, 
definitely the angle is going to be 180 minus alpha. So, that is different and similarly here 180 minus beta and all they are the they are called negative direction cosines. So, here uh, if I take uh, that angles and negative direction cosine now positive I will define see if this is the case then cos alpha cosine of alpha cosine of beta and cosine of gamma they are called the direction cosines of this line uh, you can say a b or o p usually denoted by small l m n that is the definition of uh, direction cosines of a line in space. Why that name direction cosines? Because direction cosines indicate the direction of a line in space. If it is in two dimension only with refers to x axis, y axis you can get it. In three dimension all the three angles are required. What angle it makes with x axis? What angle it makes with y axis? And what angle it makes with z axis? So, they, they, they determine the direction of a line in space. So, they are called the direction cosines. So, here uh, what are the direction cosines of x axis, y axis, z axis for example. So, here x axis itself a line, y axis itself a line and z axis itself a line. See this O p suppose it is x axis. So, that means O p coincides with x axis then very clear the angle alpha becomes 0 and then immediately this angle beta becomes 90 degree and immediately this will become 90. So, for x axis alpha 0 and beta becomes uh, 90 because x axis y axis perpendicular x axis z axis perpendicular. That means, for x axis alpha is going to be 0, beta is going to be pi, pi by 2 90 degree and gamma is also going to be 90 degree. Then what are the direction questions of x axis? See here cos 0 cos of 90 and here cos of 90. So, all of you know cos 0 is 1, cos 90 is 0, cos 90 is 0. So, 1 0 0 are the direction cosines of x axis. Similarly, for y axis suppose this O p coincides with y axis, then beta becomes 0 and alpha and gamma becomes 90. So, for y axis for y axis the d c s are going to be cos 90 Okay, beta is 0, so cos 0, cos 90 like this. Then 0, 1, 0, they are the DCs of y axis. Similarly, for z axis, the DCs are going to be 0, 0, 1 because the first two angles alpha and beta are going to be 90 and gamma is going to be 0, therefore, you will be getting cos 90, cos 90, cos 0 like this. So, DCs of z axis means 0, 0, 1 d c s of x axis 1 0 0 y axis you have to remember this what are the called d c s of the coordinate axis means you must remember while doing the uh, problems. Oh, I think uh, uh, it is time up uh, in the next class. So, I will be dealing with the properties of direction cosines and uh, I will define direction ratios what is the relationship between direction cosines, direction ratios and uh, how to find the angle between the two lines in space okay, using L m n and uh, direction ratios uh, that I will take up in the next class. Thank you.